Hi there and welcome everybody to the Wednesday Bulletin of the This Is Ibrox podcast. I am joined uh, by Andy, I suppose a, a battle-scarred podcaster who's just informed us he's taking time out of his holiday to join us today. How are you getting on, Andy? Very well, mate, very well. It's always a pleasure. I wouldn't miss it, I wouldn't miss it. That's it. And uh, Chris, this is the first time I've been on a podcast with you. It's a pleasure to meet you, man. And uh, how's your day been? And are you looking forward to chatting about Rangers this Wednesday? Hi, thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. No holiday for me, sadly. <laughs> well, soon. Uh, a wee couple of things just before we start. Um, I always like to try and talk about what Rangers have been up to and what happened in this day. I'll maybe just chuck this out quickly. I know that uh, Philip Lander signed in this day for us. Um, i seen a bit of chat about him on, on Twitter, Andy. Um, maybe just a wee short answer on this, but Philip Lander, what do you see him uh, fit into the squad next season? Um, a fit Hollander fits into the squad every day of the week. A fit one. We've not had a fit Hollander for a long time. I've seen a start earlier on that he's only played 60 games mm-hmm. in the last two or three years, whatever it, whatever it may be, which is one game less than Goldson played the whole of last season. Yeah. Um, now, I rate the guy. I rate him as a defender. Um, I'd like to see him stay at the club, but he's got to remain fit. He's got to remain fit. He's no use to a, a European challenging Rangers team. And a yeah. challenging Rangers team if he's spending most of the time in the sidelines. It's as simple as that. Really rate him, but he's got to stay fit. Yeah. And uh, and another uh, thing that happened on this day was I was reading that uh, a Rangers blue and a Rangers white took on each other at, at Ibrox, which must have been a bit of a, a paradox for the for the Rangers does, because I don't know how you uh, cope with Rangers scoring and conceding at the same time. But there we go. I wonder if we'll see something like that. Um, today on the podcast, what we're going to talk about, uh, Rangers have signed Welsh right winger Rabbi Matondo. <laughs> Um, we'll discuss him, what he's going to bring to the team and the impact on other players in the team. Tony West and Cole McKinnon have joined Partick Thistle on loan. Um, there's still reports in, in Malik Tillman from, from Bayern Munich. That looks very much in the pipeworks, but uh, I believe the Lewandowski and is it Delit sign, uh, signing for them is, is holding things up a wee bit. Um, and we'll discuss Dr. Seri Bowley uh, joining from the City Group and, and maybe a first time at the end a wee bit about the Blackpool friendly. Um, Chris, we'll, we'll come to you first on this. Um, what a difference a, a week makes. Last Wednesday, the Rangers fans were going absolutely mental on Twitter, at, at nobody having signed. And then all of a sudden, since then, we've signed Cholak, Lawrence and Rabi Matondo. Uh, he's a Welsh international who comes with a good pedigree Signed from Schalke, he's got Bundesliga experience. It looks like a fee for, for £3 million. He said, I'm absolutely buzzing to have signed for a club as big as Rangers, and it's a big club with massive history, and I just can't wait to create more memories and more history at the club. Um, is this the right winger that we've been been crying out for? I hope so. I <laughs> all hope so. It's been about three, four seasons since probably Candace was probably the last right winger that we had. Uh, admittedly I haven't ever seen him before apart from the YouTube but I think that's probably the, the same situation for 99% of the Rangers fans maybe no Patrick but that's about it yeah. uh, having a look at his video he's rapid and he's, we've been lacking pace in the, the front line for a while apart from Kent I would say uh, doesn't he really look the, the cleanest striker of the ball I don't think but He's a good ball carrier and it looks like he draws quite a lot of fouls. I think he'll lighten the load on Kent and it'll stop people doubling up, teams doubling up, tripling up in Kent. And it'll mm-hmm. get him more involved. Hopefully a better finisher than Kent, but I think the three years are probably better finishers than Kent. So uh, I think he looked quite sharp in the Rangers video they put out yesterday, despite saying he only, he only had a week's pre-season training, I think, in Germany. Yeah, well, I, th- I think anybody that's bold enough to have as the sort of, when he was being revealed as, as we lightning bolt pendant, uh, you've, you've got to be fast to, to be having that um, on your Instagram, I think. Um, Andy, he comes with a pretty a big pedigree. It seems Schalke signed him for, for £11 million from, from the City group, or, or Manchester City, I should say, um, a couple of years ago. He's in the last deal, uh, year of his contract. You know, Chris has already talked about his pace. I was I was reading that everywhere he's been in terms of Belgium, Germany, his time in England at, at Stoke, he, he repeatedly set the 
the fastest time for, for, for running and training and, and during matches as well. Um, is, what, is he just going to go straight into the team? Is this, is this a way that you can see his playing with, with Pace, with Ken and uh, Matondo in the wings? I can. I can, I can be the case. And I think it's necessary. Um, I spoke briefly on our WhatsApp group that I think when you go away from home in Scotland and it's a tight game, which it can be more often than not in Perth and in the in places like this, um, it can be a tight game. Pace nine times out of ten wins the game. So I can kind of see Van Bronckhurst thinking here, you've got pace on either side and mm. Morelos through the middle. Ideally, that's my front three from what I've seen so far this season, albeit very little. Mm. Um, I think he's, he's going for pace and I think that is, is, is necessary. When it comes to the right wing, I totally agree with Chris. We've not really had this. We've not had a, a solid right winger, somebody who will get the ball down and beat a man down there. What I will say, though, is I was really getting, getting to like Scott Wright near the end of last season. He's goal in mm-hmm. the Scottish Cup final, I think, can I prove what he can do. Um, there's, there's Rangers fans being back and forth, myself included, and whether Scott Wright fits into a regular Rangers 11. Um, I think on the form he showed near the tail end of last season, yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Um, but if this boy lives up to anything like what we're hearing or what I'm seeing anyway on the, on the very short YouTube videos, yeah. then I think he's going to be he's fighting for his place again. Um, I can see he's going to be pace and a front three of Kent, Morelos and Matondo. That's going to frighten a lot of defences in Scotland and Europe. Yeah. Chris, I think we'll, we'll stick on that point. Do you think? How do you think having such pace against a... We normally play against teams that sit very, very, very deep in, in the SPFL. Um, I know we sort of briefly talked about it before um, we came on, but do you think that, that this might be something that we see going forward in terms of that um, sort of 3-5-3 three, three formation, um, or 3-5-2, I should say? Uh, I know JB spoke very well about it um, earlier on in the week, but do you th- foresee that as a way that we're going to play going forward next season? I said that towards the end of last season, I had a feeling Gio was looking at a 3 5 2 just with the way he was setting up and then with the sign in the suitor and the links with Doki as well. I thought he was maybe considering the back three. Uh, obviously, with the pace that Matondo's got in the league, if he's running against like a brick wall, two brick walls, I don't really know how that will work out, but I'm interested to see how he plays against the likes of Celtic and in Europe, I think. When we're hitting teams in the account or having Kent, like we've seen what Kent can do in Europe. So I think if we've got that other option on the, the other side, as I said earlier, it takes away the, the load on just Kent, the emphasis on him. Yeah, I mean, I, w- I was having a wee look um, before we came on again at his stats and uh, it seemed to be, was it um, uh, Circle, Bruce Circle or something like that? He was at last year. Uh, I saw that he had... 12 goal contributions in 27 games. I think 10 of those were actual goals. Two of those were assists. Surely, I think Van Bronckhorst is, is the type of guy that he's going, they're going to get him in. And that's a big thing that they're going to be working on is him getting the ball into the box. Uh, a bit more for guys like Cholak, uh, Morelos, Roof, um, getting on the end of. So hopefully that's something we see going forward. Um, Andy, in terms of... We've heard the board banging on about this, and I've heard Ross Wilson say it in, on the bat on the Rangers news um, when they were talking about the Matondo side in terms of the player trading model. I just want to know uh, how significant a signing this is, given that he seems to be, you know, a very very highly rated prospect. Um, he's, he's representing Wales at the World Cup this year, which um, something we perhaps didn't have was a lot of players that are involved in the World Cup. Um, I know that he's talked about that. I know Tom Lawrence has also talked about that. Uh, is this the kind of flip side of the Aribo transfer in terms of the player trading model? I mean, surely we're going to be looking to have this guy in for a few years and, and do something similar with Aribo and, and sell him on to the Premier League? I think so. I think, I think so. I think it's a reason. So I don't think it was quite three, was it? It was 2.7 something. So yeah. I'm here. And I, don't splat hairs. Say it's three. Yeah. Um, they're, certainly, they're certainly looking, I think, to to be a massive player for Rangers on the European stage, fingers crossed the Champions League stage um, this year. Um, we'll see how that goes as of next week, I suppose. Yeah. But I think uh, you're bringing in a player at that level, going to the World Cup, you would be able to show his talents at the World Cup <clears throat> on a European level, and then, of course, at a Scottish level, and then you're going to sell him on for more. He's still a young guy. Um, I think that's definitely going to be, be, be the case. What we need to be careful of, though, is that <clears throat> if he has 
five, six, seven good games for Rangers. We, we just start deciding that he's worth 18 million, don't we? And yeah. it really works out like that. Um, so these things take a bit of time, but I think that's definitely the, the kind of model they're going forward with, Kyle. Eh? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I, I think that I think I think that is the plan, sort of long term. Uh, Chris, um, I don't know if you've seen his, his interview on on Rangers TV, and I think this might be a, a bit of a loaded question, given the fact that we're all Rangers supporters, and I'm asking a Rangers supporter uh, this question. <laughs> but um, he mentioned the appeal of playing for Rangers. You know, I, I just I loved watching the interview, given that he, he dropped that. You know, we've been in the Europa League final. He'd been watching that. He'd, he'd heard about Rangers before, obviously being Welsh and uh, you know about Rangers. We're a, we're a British institution. Um, and another thing that I liked that he kind of dropped in in that interview was how well Ramsey and Defoe spoke about being part of a club like Rangers. Is is the appeal? sort of back for, for signing these players again because I, I don't know, I, f- I fear when Gerard left that that was something that we might have lost as a club, the sort of Gerard effect because every single player that, that we signed under him said the same thing you know, we, uh, we're here Stephen Gerrard's the manager, I know Van Bronckhorst is a massive player but I don't think he's quite got that um, the same level of uh, fame maybe you could call it that, that Gerrard has, so it is the sort of the wow factor back at Rangers to attract guys like this in. I would agree with that. I think maybe, obviously Van Bronckhurst's record speaks for itself, but I would agree that Gerard's got a bit maybe, a, maybe an attraction for players to come play under. I, I was fearful that that would be the case when he left, but I think obviously with what blue specs on, who wouldn't <laughs> want to sign with Rangers? Yeah. And I think the Europa League final and not just last year, I'd say probably the last few years how we've performed in Europe, we've exceeded expectations. So I think the only thing holding his back was playing in the domestic league. Yeah. Uh, I did happen to see his a wee clip of his interview where he did mention that uh, he plays on the front foot all the time, which is good to hear. But he also said he likes to do the defensive side as well. So it yeah. could be a lot similar to Kent on the right, a right-sided Kent, is how I'm seeing it, basically. Yeah, that's it. That's another takeaway thing from from watching the videos and 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 seeing what he was was saying about the the type of player that he was. Was he looks like a grafter and he looks like he's going to work. And I think if you do those two things, if you work and you you score goals and you're on about it and you, you excite us as supporters, you're onto a winner. I don't think we can ask for much more. So so here's hoping is um <clears throat> is a good one. Um, the next sort of point is his impact on the team. There's one player that I'm thinking of in particular here, Andy, is, is Flashing Sakala. I know we were having a brief discussion about it again before we came on in the pod. For me, I'm looking at it. I now see players like Lawrence, Morelos, Kent, Matondo, Roof, all ahead of them now. Um, given the fact that most of these guys can can play across the front three as well, Um where do you see Fashion Sakala fit into this? Uh, given as well the similarities, I think, of Matondo, the fact that he's come from the Belgian league, he scored quite well. Is are we going to see much of Fashion Sakala next season? Do you think? Sadly, I don't think so. I mean, sadly, um, I like Fashion Sakala. Yeah. Um, his goal last year at Celtic Park near the tail end was was exquisite. It was absolutely fantastic. What a finish! Um, I really like him. He was asked to do jobs that isn't his game at all. I can't. It was either Red Star or Braga away. He was yeah. well out of his depth Absolutely, as a lone striker. Yeah. Um, so things like that. But he, he went and he gave it his all. And this this signing, sadly, takes him right down to third or fourth choice, in my opinion. You've got Morelis and Kolak in the middle. Uh, Roof possibly as well. You've got Kent. You've got Scott Wright. Matondo now. He's, it's going to be few and far between seeing Fashion Sakala. He's got blistering pace. And I must admit, I don't fully agree with some Rangers fans who say he didn't have the finish. I think he did. Mm. Probably not enough. But I think he has got the capability of, of, a, of a good finish, Sakala. Um, hat trick of Motherwell away, things like that. You know, you've got all these to fall back on. Um, but sadly, I think he's, he's, he's down down the pecking order. Um, and that's a shame. But you've got to... You've got to work your way back in. He's going to be the one that's been seen in training day in, day out. Yeah. Um, I don't doubt as a professional manager... Van Brockhurst, if he sees it in training, he's going to have to go with it. Um, and you know what it's like these days, uh, Kyle? I think it's completely different to it was even 10, 8 years, eight, ten years ago. You don't have a first start in the living. It's rotated for certain games. 
Um, for example, if a left back's a bully, it might be a different winger. You play things like that, yeah. especially if you're playing SPL Europe. SPL Europe, there may well be a chance for him, but as it stands right now with, with the, the, the squad list we have, sadly, and I mean sadly, I see him drifting down it a wee bit. Yeah, there's there's quite a few comments coming in. Uh, we're talking about Sakala. We've got uh, Callum C mentions Sakala's not good enough. We've got Paul McGarry asking if he goes out on loan in RFC 56. He says he's got to get rid of him. He's not at our level. I think there's something in what you said there, Andy, in terms of, again, I know he's, he's I compared him to Matondo, given that I've only watched it, like everybody else, the, the YouTube videos of him. But I think the difference is, is that Matondo seems to have a much much more composed finish because I mean them as a, a guy that sits a couple of seats along from me at Ibrox and uh, the amount of times I can remember seeing Fashion Sakala through on goal and, and, and his face when it ended up in, in row Z behind. So I think I think that's hopefully what uh, what Matondo will bring to the team. But I, I fear you're right. I think he'll be quite low down the pecking order. I do I sorry Kyle, I don't agree to an extent with some of the comments there. However what I will say is if last year taught us anything especially the tail end your injury list can go from one to six like that. So yeah, I'm a big believer in keeping players who p- perhaps tried and tested the wrong word for Sakala, but players with ability there, I'm a great believer in keeping. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. I, th- I think he's handy to have around. Um, Chris, before we sort of go on to our next point, uh, um, let's just talk about it. Are, are you happy with the, the transfer business thus far? Um, I know Van Bronckhorst is, is hinted that he's, he's maybe looking at bringing in a couple more, but I mean, that's a week we've brought in Lawrence, Matondo, and uh, the third name escapes me. Cholak. Cholak, yeah. Um, are you happy with those three signings in a week? Uh, oh, aye. Three in a week, brilliant compared to what we had, aye. Uh, I would like to see another centre mid come in for me. I think too many of the midfielders are too similar for me. Uh, and I, I was in the comments on the Monday built in, and mm-hmm. I had a wee bit of a hangy with RFC 56 when you just said them there. I, mm-hmm. I, said, I was think, saying about a centre back coming in that can play a similar amount of games as Goldson, but yeah. he was advocating for the likes of Leon King. And I, when I had a couple of days to ponder it, I think he's right. I'm, yeah. I'm happy with that now. Uh, I don't want to block the likes of Leon King's away. So uh, probably just a centre mid. And then I think it'd be a case of if people go bringing in a replacement for them. Maybe the likes of Harander and Roof, I think if we could get shot of them and bring yeah. folk in, I would I would pursue that. And Andy, your thoughts on, on the transfer business that we've we've done so far? Um I think it's been four point six million for for if you include Suter in that as well. Um obviously we've seen Itten go out for for one point eight. Um I think that seems like quite good business so far, don't you? Yep, especially this week. Um, I totally agree with Chris. I'd like to see an attacking midfielder come in. Um, I see Lawrence that kind of way, but I'd like to see another one come in. Um, I disagree with getting rid of Roof. Um, I think Roof's an asset if he stays fit, and I know that's a risk, and you'll never you'll never have a consensus of 100% Rangers fans agreeing with that. Um, and I said the same about Hollander at the start of the podcast. But on the whole... Um, I'm quite happy with the business, especially this week, but I'd like to see one more attacking midfielder in there and then I'm happy to go. Yeah, um, I can see Ross piping up in the comments of, of This Is Ibrox um, and uh, I just want to clarify, I'm definitely not I'm gutted that Lewis Ferguson's went to Bologna. I wasn't the one ranting and raving about him in the last podcast, so uh, there we go. But uh, yeah, it's been a good bit of transfer business so far and, and, and long may continue. I hope we get a couple of signs, I think, sent for... Uh, midfielder, an attacking central midfielder is, is very much in the cards next. I know that we, um, maybe that's something I should mention as well, that obviously we haven't got uh, Fijili. Um, he's went to, to Mainz, which you, I, I, I say you can understand. I can't really understand it as a Rangers supporter, but he's obviously been offered more money in a, in a top five league. So we move on to the next one. Um, Chris, the, the next point I think we'll come to is, is our our sort of unofficial relationship with, with Partick Thistle that we seem to have on the go. Uh, today it was announced, there was a few loan signings announced today um, that Tony Weston and Cole McKinnon have both gone out to Partick Thistle. I seem to remember, we do, we do have a bit of a weird relationship in terms of that seems to be where we send a lot of our loan play, players. I remember Hasty, Dick Hasty went there, I'm sure, and Juan Allegria also. Um, another... 
Who was that? Sorry? Lewis Mayo, I think he was. Lewis Mayo as well, yeah, you're right. Um, another interesting one as well. Um, I know you are talking about this, Chris, the Ross McCollin, uh, Ross McCausland, sorry, going to the Graf Shap. Um, he's having a friendly first. Uh, what's your thoughts on, on moves like this for these guys and, and, and how does it benefit Rangers? Hopefully it'll benefit in the long term. Obviously, that's I think that's three of the four players that played against Hearts last season. Oh, mm-hmm. Divine started the game with three of the four subs that came on. So we obviously see a future for them and they're maybe close to making the first team. Uh, as I was saying before we came on about the interview with Craig Mahorn the other day, mm-hmm. and he was saying that one of the players lacked technique and they were looking at pursuing a move to Holland to try and help benefit that. So I would assume that's where that's came from. And then mm-hmm. the other one was lacking in physicality, but he didn't want to name the player. So that, that I'd assume that would probably be Weston as well. Yeah. Uh, it was quite good to he was talking about identifying the players, no weaknesses, but what needed to, what they needed to improve on rather than just sending them to any any team that's a higher level. Uh, so obviously with the technique and that yeah, it's good to see them going out their comfort zone and travelling to Holland and that is to try and improve their game so it can only be good for us in the long run hopefully yeah I'm a, I'm a massive fan of of players going on like away abroad uh, especially uh, Matondo makes that quite relevant given that again in his interview on RTV he spoke about he spoke very very well about it actually about how it's uh, matured them and, and shaped them as a person you know, going abroad and, and just seeing a different way of, of living. But Chris, do you think these guys have got a genuine chance of starting with Partick Thistle? Um, and do you think that we'll see them feature at any point um, for Rangers in the future? I think uh, McKinnon's got a good chance of starting through what I was reading earlier. Uh, Weston, I think it was Ian McCall that was maybe alluded to the yeah. physicality he was now quite there. So I don't know if he'll start, but if he starts banging in the goals when he when he does get a chance, then they can't really ignore him, can they? Yeah, for for what it's worth, I, I really hope Weston goes on and, and has a good season there because I've got I've got a pal that goes to quite a lot of the the B team games and he's always banging on about how good Tony Weston is in terms of he's finished. He scored an outrageous amount of goals, I'm sure, for the for the B squad. Thirty five, absolutely bonkers. So yeah, he's one I certainly hope we see in a in a Rangers shirt in the future. Um, Andy, um, the, the next point to come on to is, I know we were, we were briefly talking about this in terms of uh, Dr. Seri Bowley. He seems to be somebody that's um, joining from the City Group. It's not really been revealed or confirmed by Rangers yet what, what his, his role will be within the club. Um, just a wee couple of things about him. He's, he's worked with Van Bronckhorst uh, when Van Bronckhorst was on his management sabbatical at City. Um, the athletic article sort of says his role within the City Group was coach recruitment, coach development, overall football mythology, and he seemed to be the, the central figure for all the, the coaches that were part of that group to, to go and talk to. Now, I, I'm not saying get into what he's going to do at the club, but um, is this something that, that perhaps the club's going down, that, that sort of City or the City Group type, type model um, I know I was having a chat with, with Craig earlier on uh, about it and he was sort of saying that he didn't think that that was the case, but I, I disagree with him slightly in terms of um, especially how aggressive we've been in the youth market at the moment. We've gone out, I mean, we have got some of the cream of the crop from Scottish football. Um, you, do you think that's the road that Rangers are going down and do you think that will have a, a sort of overall benefit impact on the club? It would have an impact, of course it would, if that's the route they're going down. To answer, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. But it's certainly pleasing to see the amount of youths that were snapping up, good youths that were starting at the, at the ages they are. Um, that's fantastic. When it comes to the City Group, it has its sceptics, but it works. It works. They're, they're successful. They're very successful. And you've kind of got to trust Gio on this. He knows this this guy well. I don't know anything about him. I did a, a quick Google yeah. um, prior to this podcast, and he's into his old, as you say, mythology and sports science. 10, 15 years ago, these were all buzzwords that folk used to kid on they were more professional than they are. But it's, it's a massive part of every game now. Um, and I think I spoke to, I think it was Scott who was hosting a, a podcast tail end of last season. And when you look at the, the energy and fitness levels of our players last year, 
played 120 minutes Thursday, 120 minutes Sunday, and won in both games. The 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 size of that job is, is massive. It's massive in, in the modern footballer. They're basically trained to be machines, and that can only be done with sports scientists. You don't do that going to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You do that with diet plans, and you do that with sports science. That's all I know about it. As you can probably see, I'm nothing like an athlete. So <laughs> I can just imagine what, what they do go through. But I think it's always beneficial to get the cream or the crop of these people. And from what I've Googled, and albeit very briefly, I think we do have somebody quite good here. Yeah. Uh, Chris, I'd be keen to get your thoughts on this as well. Um, is, it, is that the road we're going down, the sort of modern football approach with this? I mean, I, I don't, we won't be doing it certainly in the, the same level that teams like Chelsea and, and, and Man City are doing. But, I mean, you see the amount of money that, that, that these teams make from their academy. Again, go back to Matondo going, going to Schalke for, for 11 million quid. And I don't think he had a first team appearance at Man City. Um is that is that the road that we are going down, and and what do you think of that as a concept for Rangers? I think so. It's interesting to see. I think we need to modernise the club a bit. Uh, obviously, what Andy was saying there, that the City Group is successful. I think I was reading stats for every team they're involved in has had some sort of success in the last five six years. So it's yeah. obviously working. Uh, I think Rangers' infrastructure is starting to look quite promising. I think we could attract a lot of youth players to, to the team when you've got like uh, Zeb Jacobs and uh, obviously the new doctor as well coming in. Obviously, I don't know what his role will be, just gone by the, he had a wee look when he's linked in and as Andy was saying, it's like uh, sports psychology and that, so I don't know if he's, the players will maybe be identified and he'll be given a list and he's trying to work out if they've got the right characteristics to put, to play for Rangers or something along their lines. Yeah. Same with the coaches. Uh, there's a wee quote on his LinkedIn I've seen uh, develops environments where success is inevitable. So I like that. If yeah. that comes to fruition, then yeah. I'm all for it. That, that sounds like it's going straight up in the, the dressing room wall somewhere, doesn't it? <laughs> that, that right and right next day we welcome the chase. And Andy will let you off when we're going to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You're busy with the building these days. That's right. <laughs> well, <I'll make. laughs> <laughs> that's that exactly um, that brings us on to, to the last point of the podcast tonight we've got the uh, Blackpool friendly um, on Saturday Andy um, it's going to be a great day out for the Bears um, I know that we love a, a, a friendly down in England the, the Sheffield Wednesday game springs to mind when we took 10,000 uh, travelling supporters it was a great day out um, what can we sort of say about a, a pre-season friendly? We, we hope everybody gets minutes in their legs, nobody gets injured, and, and it's a good day out, ultimately. Yes, that, exactly that. That's what we're looking for. Um, that on top of Blackpool, we'll be looking to see how they're getting, going to go on. They came up, didn't they? They're in the Championship now. They came up last year, so yeah, yeah. it's a step up for them. They'll be looking to put on a good show themselves. It'll be good to see more than 45 minutes, as long as they've paid their lecky bill. <laughs> um, that. You're, you're quite good at paying lecky bills and that. We can keep the lights on. So um, we can really help me out with that. But as for the, the supporter side of it, it's, uh, it's just good carnage written all over it, hasn't it, really? Eight yeah. weeks without football, so let's go on a four-hour bus trip to Las Vegas or North England. It's got carnage written all over it, but it'll be good fun. It certainly does. Yeah, I, as I said, I just I hope it's a good day out for everybody involved. Everybody gets there safely and back up the road safely. And ultimately, I hope we get to see all three of our new signings. I'm really, really looking forward to seeing Matondo in particular. Um, and I hope there's no injuries and, and that'll do for me. Um, that just about wraps it up, I think, for this evening. There's a, a couple of things just to tell you about before we go. Um, I spent most of my day watching old uh, Rangers Champions League qualifiers. I've got to give a shout out to the, the game in, um, against Anthraf Wamagustas, I think it was. Buffo scored an absolute belter. Dado Perso scored a belter that game too. Hopefully that... Um, bodes well, given that we've got another Croatian striker up front now. Um, but Andy, in amongst all that, I managed to catch your My Rangers 11, which was a fantastic watch, by the way. T tell us a wee bit about that. Oh, it's, um, I put it up on my Twitter. It <clears throat> sounds so simple. Name your Rangers 11 of players you've seen live. So for me, that was from 1988 onwards. Um, my first trip to Ibrox. Um, sounds simple, but it's not. And it's, it's really, really good. What I liked about it, Kyle, was it's really just two guys chatting and blethering away and it's more of a laugh 
although there's a bit of seriousness to it there, you're discussing how you never pick the ex-player to ex-player. Um, but it's um, on YouTube now, so it's, it's always always a good laugh. Looking forward to seeing the rest of the boys as well. Yeah, I urge everybody to go and check that out. Um, myself and Craig, we've got a, an In the Dugout with Reese coming out, which um, I think that's tomorrow, that's due. Um, I'm not going to say anything about that, just watch it. And, and that's all there is to say about it. And you will be um, taken on a journey by Reese, shall we say. Um, just uh, just want to say thanks to Andy. Anytime, Kyle. Anytime at all. all right, enjoy the rest of your holiday. And thanks to Chris. That was uh, a pleasure being on there with you, big man. All right, cheers, lads. Um, remember, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and you can follow us on the normal channels. You've got YouTube, um, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We've got the next bulletin will be Friday at 7 o'clock and we've got another one at 8 o'clock on Sunday. See you then, everybody, and thanks for joining and listening. Oh, oh, oh.